Welcome to Live Doth, your online Doth Yomi Shear. Shalom Aleichem, welcome back to today's Daf Yemi, which is Sukkah Daf Ches. We begin on Daf Zayin Amid Bey's eight lines from the bottom, right above that circle. Amr Rabbi Yechanan, Sukkah Ha'asuyah Kekivshan. A Sukkah which was fashioned like a Kivshan, like a furnace, meaning it was round rather than square. How large does that circle have to be to be kasha for Sukkah? Im Yesh Be'ekefa, if in its circumference, it has enough space to accommodate to seat 24 people side by side, then it's large enough. But otherwise, it's not big enough for a sukkah. Now we're speaking that the 24 people, these imaginary people, are lined up within the walls of the sukkah. Meaning, the living space of the sukkah, the interior halal, has to be large enough to seat 24 people along its perimeter. Otherwise, it's not big enough. Says the Gemara, we have many sheer options by sukkah. 6 by 6 Tfachim, that's by Silal, 7 by 7, by Shammai, and Rebbe, who told us yesterday, it needs to be 4 Amis by 4 Amis. Kiman, apparently. <laughs> who, who's Shita? Is Rabbi Yechanan following? It can't be uh, anybody other than Rabbi. Kiman ke Rabbi, the Amar. Kol sukkah she'im ba arba amis. Al arba amis psula. A sukkah which is smaller than four amis long and four amis wide is possible. Rabbi holds sukkah's dearest. Kva has to appear like a permanent structure to properly accommodate its dweller. The Gemara in Erevin speaks about four amis being mekayim shal adam. Enough space to lie down, to stretch out. So according to Rabbi, it needs to be four by four Amis, and apparently, Rabbi Yechanan is following that shita. Well, says the Gemara, 24 people around your sukkah, that's, that's way too big. It's an oversized sukkah. It's even larger than Rabbi's requirement. Mechti, because let's analyze. When we say 24 people, how much is that in, in Amis? Gavra, a person, Ba'am Sayyasef, will sit in an Amma. We assume, we estimate, that a person is an amma wide, so an amma by an amma, and 24 people side by side pretty much take up 24 amma. Why does the sukkah have to be so large? We have a formula which says like this, Kol shleisha. When you have a circle which has a circumference of three, shleisha tfachim, three tfachim, yesh bo yroichav tefach. Evidently, it has a diameter of a tefach. This is uh, known as the pi formula. Raman Pirsha Mission says it isn't 100% accurate, this 3 to 1 ratio, but we will makabal. This is the formula we're meant to apply to Dine Torah. We learn from Pasik as Rashi will bring for us. Let's work with this formula. One diameter equals three circumference. Here we're looking for a sukkah which is four amma wide. So how much does that circle have to be? Twelve. The traits are sagi. Right? Three times four is twelve. How did you get to twenty-four amis around that circle? Let's go over to Rashi. 16, 17 lines from the bottom. So the sukkah is asuyaki kivshan, agula, round, the less like achirim. Rabbi Yechanan doesn't hold of shitas achirim, that the sukkah needs to have zavias, corners, straight walls. It can be even round as long as it's large enough to accommodate within it a, a hypothetical square of 4 by 4 amis. Enough to have 24 people sitting. So ba means within the sukkah, not outside the sukkah. The actual living space has to have that type of circumference to accommodate 24 people. Keman asks the Gemara, why so big? Apparently it's Kirabi. Is that so? We have no other feasible alternative. It must be Rabbi. There's nobody else that provides such a large shear as Rabbi does. Rabbi Yechon provided this huge shear. 
Whose shita was he following? Apparently Rebbe. But still, it's way too big. Why? A person sits by Amsa Yosef. Kol echad mekoyme ama. Nim tzai kefa chavdalat amis. If so, 24 people equal 24 amis. The kaimelan, and we know that this formula is meant to be applied when it comes to dinay Torah. Kol igol shiyesh bekefa gimot vachem. A circle which has a circumference of three tvachim, yesh beruch tefach, is presumed to have a diameter of a tefach, tchsev biyam shasa shloimai. This was the pool created by Shlomo Melech in the Beis Hamidosh. How large was it? Eser ba'ama misvasi al svasi. It was tw- ten ama from side to side, diameter of ten. Ogul saviv, it was round. Vikav shloishim ba'ama yisav yisav yisav. With a line, a kav of 30, meaning at a circumference of 30. So we see, la'esa amas roichav, 10 ama diameter, shleishim ama heck of 30, around the circle. Alma chinami betrays the ama's heck of sagi here as well. A 12th circumference should be sufficient. Then you have a pussy I bought to provide a width of 4 amas. So why so big? 12 around should be just fine. Answers the Gemara up on top. Yeah, Hanami would be good. That's when you're creating a circle with a diameter of four. I will be reborn by your way. When you're trying to create a, a square, a square of four by four is more. The circle with a diameter of twelve with a circumference of twelve accommodates a diameter of four. But then it rounds at the edges. You're not, you're not getting a full square of four by four. So to create a square of four by four, which is the Minimum requirement, according to Rebbe. You need to make a greater, a bigger shape than just 12 in circumference. Says more, okay, let's increase it a bit. How much? By 25%. Michti, let's analyze. Kama maruba, ya Yisrael igl revia. A square is 25%, is a revia, a quarter. Greater, meaning the floor space of a square is 25% larger than a circle of similar proportions. If so, b'shitz or sagi. 16 people around your sukkah should be enough. Right? If a circle with a 4 amma diameter is 25% smaller than a square of similar proportions, then if that circle needed a circumference of 12, just increase it by 4. You move it up to 16. You don't need 24. Let's go to Rashi, four lines from the top. How do we know that? Some say, That's number one. And actually, you can see it. Rashi is going to prove it. The ilu ama agula. If you have a round ama, meaning a circle with a diameter of an ama, what is its circumference? Chud shalish amis makifa. A line of three amis will circle that that uh, that circle. You have a circumference of three, three per one diameter. However, when you create a square. Of similar proportions, the ama merubas. If you have a square, an ama by an ama, how large? How long is that perimeter? Tzricha chut dal the seivava. You need a chut of four to go all around that square ama. Ama lechol right? You have an ama on each side. So this shows that an ama square is twenty five percent larger in its in its floor space in its uh, square footage than a circle of similar proportions. Tesis on the left side here disagrees. He says, how could you bring a riot from perimeters? Lamashal, he says, you have a very narrow but long rectangle. That perimeter, that chut hamakif, will be very long. But does it say much regarding its floor space, regarding its area? No, it's very narrow and long. So it isn't necessarily so that a greater perimeter, a longer chut hamakif, has anything to do with floor space. So he disagrees with Rashi's raya. And uh, Farshim say Rashi didn't mean this is a, a raya in all cases. It just means near line nine. In this case, in our case, when the square and the circle are pretty much uh, 
you know, a proportionate, then, yeah, you see that discrepancy. You see that 25% difference. So it's just an example, but it's not a, a bona fide formula. In any case, Tysus provides another formula to prove this point. If you care to take a look, it's the, uh, it's the diagram around midway down the page. So you have a bunch of uh, lines there. You have actually three diagrams put together. A circle on top, that's a starting point. Over to the right, which is uh, something that appears like a triangle. And then over to the left, which is a rectangle. So briefly speaking, it's like this. You start with a circle, which is a tefach wide. Tefach wide means a circumference of three. You split that circle, right? You cut it halfway from the bottom up to the midpoint. And then you flatten out <laughs> those virtual rings. That takes you over to the figure on the right, that triangle. How large is that triangle right now? So it depends where you're looking. On the right, you have the longest point of that triangle, which is going to be how long from side to side, from top to bottom? Three tefachim. That represents the outermost ring of that three tefach circumference. Right? That's going to be three tefachim from top to bottom. And then it narrows over to the left till it gets to a point which represents the, um, the ring which was at the midpoint of that, of that circle, which was now flattened out. Now, you slice this in two, right? There's a line going right through the middle, and that's going to be how wide? Think, how wide? A, tef, a half a tefach, right? That represents the um, half the thickness of that, of that original circle. So it's a half a tefach wide, and as far as the length from top to bottom, at the longest point, is going to be three tefach. Now you take this uh, two-part triangle and then rearrange it, line it up one, so, one next to the other side by side to create that rectangle which is seen at the bottom uh, left corner of that uh, configuration there. So how large is that? What are the dimensions of that rectangle? Says Toysvis, it is exactly a half a tefach wide, right? That hasn't changed. Half a tefach wide by one and a half long. Because right? you split that triangle, which was three tefach long, into two, and you lie, lay them side by side. So now the rectangle is one and a half amas long, one and a half tefach long, by a half a tefach wide. So that's the floor space of a, of a circle, which started off being a tefach in diameter. Right? So how much floor space is that? It's three strips of a half, a tefach by a half a tefach. Right? You take this rectangle and split it into three parts, each one being a half by a half a tefach. So that's your floor space of your original circle. It says, Tesis, if you take a square, a tefach by tefach square, so rather than a circle, you start with a square, tefach by tefach, how many half tefach by half tefach parts are there in that Tefach by Tefach square, four, right? Tefach by Tefach, and divide into four, each one being a half by a half. So you see clearly, says Tesis, that a square occupies 25% more space than a circle of similar proportions. So that's Tesis right. Okay, getting back to the Gemara. We're looking to create a sukkah which can accommodate floor space of four by four armies. So the Gemara had a kasha. Well, a circumference of 12 is enough. So the Gemara, no, that's a circle. You want to create a square, which is 25% larger in space. So instead of a circumference of, of 12, you need a perimeter of 16, right? 25% more than 12. Well, 16 is enough. Why do you say 24? It says the Gemara, three lines from the top. Ha, ni mil. Yeah, this formula. This 25% discrepancy between Circle and square doesn't always work. That's when you're carving out an eagle, a circle, from within a pre-existing square. Like the diagram 
on top here in the Gemara, the first diagram, you have a a square, which is let's say four by four amas, and you're forming a circle in that square. So of course the circle is twenty five percent less in space than that than that square. Right? But in a case where Aval Ribua Dinafik Migayakula, suppose you're doing it in the reverse. You're carving out a square from within a circle, like the lower diagram, second diagram there. You're starting with a circle and forming a square within a circle. But it's fey. The difference, the gap between circle and square is way more. The circle must be way more than 25% larger, cover more space, than that square. You should merge with the kairos, because it has to go over the corners. It has to really stretch all around that square. This concept that a square and a circle are very close, it's just a 25% difference, it depends which way you're going. If you're drawing a circle within a square, yeah, then the square is merely 25% greater than that circle. But if it's the circle being formed around the square, in which case it has to cover all the corners, the difference in area between circle and square is much greater. Says the Gemara, okay, granted, I understand. It's more than 25%. But still, it's not going to justify Rabbi Yechman's formula. I understand. We're trying to get around a 4x4 four four amma square, which is a shear sukkah. And Rabbi Yechon's kifshan is basically a circle around the, uh, the theoretical, hypothetical square 4x4 four four amma. It's within it. And therefore, it has to be more than just 25% more than a square. But let's work it out. We'll see that we don't need 24. Let's analyze closely. An amma of a straight angle, meaning you have an amma by an amma square, is amso utrechum shivachsoyna. What is the diagonal of that of that box? You have an amma by an amma box. What is the yalachsoyna going from corner to corner? Diagonal. It's an amso utrechum An amma and two fifths. In our language, 1.4. Okay? Actually, Tesis says, Eina chesh ben mechuven. He proves that 1 by 4 isn't exact. It's actually a bit more. But in any case, it seems from the first when it comes to Hilchas Torah, again, we apply this formula which was handed down by Masur. This is the way we're meant to uh, calculate chesh of So Let's work with this. So an amma by amma square has a diagonal of 1 and 2 fifths. 1.4. Says Igmar, what are we trying to do here? We start with a, a square of not an amma by an amma, rather four by four. Right? You have to multiply everything by four. That's a shear sukkah. And you have that circle running around that, uh, that four by four amma square. Now, what is the diagonal of four by four amma square? It's going to be, well, it's four times. 1.4, 4 times 1 or 2 fifths gets you 5 and 3 fifths, right? 5.6. That's going to be the diagonal of the sukkah. Now you're going to draw a circle around that 4 by 4 amma square. What is going to be the diameter of that circle? It's exactly the same as the diagonal of that, uh, of that square. Right? Take a look at the at the second picture in the Gemara. Right? The square is the 4 by 4. Diagonal is uh, now 5.6, which is exactly the diameter of the circle formed around that square. So once you have a circle with a diameter of 5.6, you're good. You've accommodated a shear sukkah. Now, what is the circumference of a circle which has a diameter of 5.6? So you multiply 5.6 by 3. That's 16.8. It's not 24. right? 5.6 times 3 is 16.8. B'shiv, sir. So with 17, Niki Chumsha minus a fifth, 16.8, Sagi. That should be sufficient. 
So we're going to U. Starting point is a square of 4 by 4, which is a diagonal of 5.6, which is the diameter of the, of the circle being formed around that square, which leaves us with a circumference of 16.8. That should be enough. How do you get 24? He wasn't really duck. He wasn't medactic. He wasn't being exact in the way he presented the numbers. You're right, 16.8 is enough. Says Igmar, well, that's too wide of a discrepancy to say lay duck. From 16.8 to 24. Imudam rinu lay duck purta. When do we say lay duck? What is a minor discrepancy? Tuva mi amrina. There's such a great gap between reality and the, the number represented here is mi amrina. Do we say lay duck? Mi amrina lay duck. Amalai mark shisha bird of chizravashi. Let's re- rework the, the assumption here. Let's reconfigure the numbers. You're working with an assumption that 24 people represent 24 amma. That's wrong. Mi savras, gavar ba'amsa yasef. Do you think that a person sits within an amma? That's the size of a person? No. A person smaller than that. Lasa gavri bitarti amsa yasvi. Three people can sit within two ammas. So 24 people are really only... 16 amas. Kama havalu. So how much do they total? Shitsa. 16. So Rebbechon's circle had a 16 amas circumference. That's way less than 24. Says the but now you're short. You're less than the required amount. Anan shivsa nekichum shabinan. We needed 17 minus a fifth to accommodate that 4 by 4 amas square. 16.8. And now we're down to 16. My dog, he wasn't medactic. You're right, it's really 16.8. Well, Eimod Amrina Leidak, L'chumra. We only say Leidak when it's L'chumra. He overestimated, he overstated. Just to be sure. L'kulam Yamrina Leidak. But when it turns out to be a Kula, Rabbi is teaching less than the required amount. It doesn't make sense to say Leidak. Amrita Rav Asla Rav Ashi. Let's rework things again. Leilam Gavar Ba'am Yasef. Truth is, a person takes up an Amr. So 24 people are 24 Amas. But Rabbi Yechman was not placing these people in the interior of the sukkah. Rather, they were encircling the outside of the sukkah. Rabbi Yechman makam gavri like He wasn't counting for the actual space of those people. Meaning, sure, circumference is 24. Each person takes up an Amma, so it's 24 Amas. But just as a person's width is an amma, his um, thickness is an amma as well, so it's an amma by an amma. And the person is really outside the sukkah. The actual sukkah is within those people. The empty space inside that circle. That's the heksha sukkah. It's as though the people are the walls. So, Mokim Gavrilik Echashev. He didn't include the makam of the people into the cheshvan. So now you have a lot to deduct. Right? <laughs> you have 24 people. 24 amas. How much is the diameter? A third of 24. So it's 8 from side to side. From person on one side to the person on the other. You have to deduct an amma on each side, which are out of the sukkah. The sukkah is only the space between this person and that person. So you go from 8 to 6. Now you're good. The actual halal sukkah is made up of a circle which has a 6 amma diameter. Which is a circumference of how much? 6 times 3 is 18. It's perfect. It's a drop over, but it's perfect. Kamavu. So what's your total? Tamni 3, 18. Well, b'shiv sir, neki chum 17 minus a fifth is fine. 16.8 is enough. Why did he say... 18. Now it makes sense. He wasn't particular, he wasn't medactic, he wasn't exact in his numbers. And it was actually a chumrah. He was being a bit stringent. Don't cut it too close. Have 24 people, which gives you an interior of 18 in circumference, which is a bit over the required amount, in which case you know you're safe. So that's the first shot explained Rabbi Yechman's formula of 
Sukkah, so Ike Kivshan, needs 24 people alongside the perimeter. Says the we have another Pshat as well. Rabbanon de Kesri, the Rabbanon of Kesaria. The Amrilo, some say, was Dayone de Kesri, the Dayonim of Kesaria. Amri, they said as follows. They gave us a formula. Uh, the uh, proportion, the relationship between square and circle, which will seem to explain Rabbi Yechanan's formula. They said like this, Amri, Egulo de Nafek Migoy Ribur, river. This as we mentioned earlier. If you have a ribur, you have a square, and you have an Egulo which is Nafek Migoy Ribur, a circle which was formed from within a square, so you're taking the circle out of the square, river. What is the difference in area, in shatach, in square footage? A quarter. So the circle coming out of a square is 25% smaller in size than the square, as we mentioned earlier. Okay, that's a game. Here comes the chiddush. However, ribur de nafik migo yikula palga. But in our case, where your starting point is a circle, right? The circle around that kivshan, and you're trying to form a square within that circle. Ribur de nafik migo yikula is palga. It's fifty percent less. Says Rashi on top. You start with a circle. And you're squaring that circle. Right? You're making a square within a circle. You're going to deduct half of what remains within that square inside. Which is another way of saying it's a third less. Then you till so the coolant. It's a third of the entire area. Meaning it's as though you take the circle and you sort of divide it into three parts. And when you create that square within it, you're going to deduct. Meaning the square within it will be a third less in size than that original circle. Hilkel says Rashi, and of course this is pertaining to perimeter, to circumference. Hilkel, L'Sheish Eseri Boa. We want to end up with a square which has a perimeter of 16, which is a sukkah, 4 by 4. So, your starting point, your starting circle has to be 24 around because you're going to have to deduct a third. You have to go down a third to get to that square. If you want to end up at 16, you start off with 24, in which case, when you deduct a third, the result is a square. With a perimeter of 16, 4 by 4, which is a suk. And that explains why Rabbi Yechnam gave us a shear of 24 circumference for that outer circle in order to accommodate within it a square of 16, 4 by 4, which is a suk. That explains Rabbi Yechnam. says, well, actually, it's a mistake. This is not something which is correct. We see visually that the difference between the outer circle and the inner square isn't so great. You don't have to begin with 24 circumference to end up with a 4x4 four four square in the middle. There's, a more, there's no way really to substantiate uh, this formula. Ask Stasis, isn't this a wonder? How could it be that they would present such an incorrect formula which we see doesn't work? He says, really? We misinterpreted this formula presented by Dayana de Kisri. Their formula was correct. You know why? They were not speaking about the circumference, the perimeter of the circle of the square. No. They were speaking about the, the mocking, the area, the space, the square footage. And in that sense, says Tesis, they're 100% correct. They're right on. But we, meaning Rabbi Yechna, misinterpreted their formula. Uh, we thought that they were referring to the perimeter, the circumference of circle versus square. And that was a mistake. But in reality, the Hemek was speaking about the shatach, the square footage 
And then it works. It's mock. It's MS as Tosis. Why? Listen to this. Tosis is always like this. That they were speaking about a square as a starting point. Then, another circle within it. And then another square within that circle. So when you draw a square within that outer square, the space of the inner square is exactly half of the outer square. You want to take a look at the diagram in Teisvis. So it's a diagram uh, on the right, the, the first one, the top one. So you start with a large square, which is 10 by 10, and you draw another square within that, which is basically 5 by 5 whose space is exactly half, it's 50% of the outer square. Now, they were speaking about an outer square with an inner square, and also there was a circle in between both squares. That's the, the uh, next diagram, a bit lower down in Tysus. You'll see a square on the outside, the starting point, then a circle drawn inside that, then within that, Another square is the inner square mentioned earlier, which occupies half the mockum of the outer square. It says to says, this is right on. This is true. That the difference in space between the outer square and the circle is 25%, as we mentioned earlier. Right? When you draw a circle within a square, the difference in shetach and space between the two is 25%. So the circle is a quarter less space than the square around it. Then you go a step further and you draw a square within that. The inner square takes up half the space of the outer square. It's 50%. And that's what they meant. So if you go back to the beginning of Daniel history, last line of Chesam and Allah, it works out very, very poshit. Igulu de nafik riba. So eagle, which is drawn from within a circle, uh, in a square, the outer square, now you're drawing a circle within it, the difference between the two is 25%. Go further. Now you draw another square within that. It's all the same diagram. You draw another square within that circle, which is within the other square. Palga. The difference between the inner and the outer squares are half. So the inner square is 50% of the outer square. That's true. That works. So he says that uh, the Gemara misunderstood their, their formula. They weren't speaking about perimeters, circumferences. They were speaking about Shetach and Makkah, which is actually true. Now it's interesting that the Hagois Agro and Erevin, in the beginning of Perik Chaloin, where the Gemara discusses uh, similar concepts and pretty much presents all these formulas uh, almost in the same way as the Gemara here. So the Gavis Agro says Chas v'Shalom that the Gemara was Toya that Rabbi Yechon made a mistake. This is such an obvious mistake. They're speaking about the, the floor space uh, of the of the inner of the interior square in proportion to the outer square. How do you get to uh, this, this number of twenty four, which is the circumference, which is to accommodate a four by four square? So the Vilna Gavis says like this Chas v'Shalom Shato. Rather, the Gemara, the Gemara misunderstood Rabbi Yechanan. Meaning, Rabbi Yechanan was speaking about the, um, the square, which is outside that circle, which is outside that inner square. And that needs to be 24. That's right on. It's 100% correct. Meaning, Let's start with the inside square, which is 4 by 4 it's a sukkah. And we have this kifshan around it, because sukkah happens to be round. So it has to accommodate that square. Rabbi Yechon was speaking about estimating it in a simple manner, a simple method. It's easier to estimate based on a square than a circle. So how do you know that your, uh, your circle around that 4 by 4 amma square is large enough. Very simple. Create a square around that circle. So you went from 
square inside was the sukkah, the circle around it, which is the actual wall of the sukkah, is the kitchen. How do you know it's large enough? Draw a, an imaginary square around that. It's, it's easier to work with squares and circles. So create a square around that circle. If that square, which is really double, the shetach, double in size, of the interior square, which is the sukkah. So if that square can accommodate 24 people around its perimeter, then you know that the circle within it is accommodating the inner square of 4x4. That really works. It's actually a bit more, a bit machmer. You don't need to have a square which accommodates 24. It's more like 23. But he's working based on this premise that Tais has presented, that the outer square occupies double the amount of space of the inner square. So the inner square was 4 by 4 and had a perimeter of 16, and you created a circle around it. And then a square around that, and that outer square has to pretty much accommodate 24 people around its perimeter, in order to accommodate the circle which will accommodate the square. So the circle doesn't have to actually have to be that large. It's just a way of figuring out that your, that your circle, which is the actual sukkah, is large enough to accommodate the sheer sukkah, which is 4 by 4. So that's the Hagoi uh, Sagra angle of thing, things. Okay, so in summary, we uh, spoke about Shittas Rabbi Yechanan, following Rabbi, the sukkah needs to be there as kva, 4 by 4, but a square 4 by 4. Not a rectangle, not a circle. It has to be a square of 4x4. You can have a circle which will accommodate a square of 4x4. And we have two ways to explain Rabbi Yechon. First Mahalach was that the 24 people were outside the sukkah. The actual space within the sukkah was not that large. You deduct an amma on each side for the people, which leaves you with a diameter of merely 6 Right? You started with 24 amma, with a diameter of 8, but deduct an amma on each side for that person. So you're left with 6 diameter times 3. It's a circumference of 18, which is a bit more than needed, because all you really need is 16.8, which is the circumference of a circle with a diameter of 5.6, which is the diagonal of a 4 by 4 amma square. And we have the second shot based on Diana de Kistri. Amr Balevi Mishun Rameir, Shtei Sukkah Shel Yaitzrim. Yaitzer was this um, pottery maker, this potter. So he had these sukkahs, these shacks. He had two of them side by side. In the inner one, he would actually do his um, do his work, do his uh, his craft. In the outer one, he would display his wares. It was his showroom. Shtei Sukkah Shel Yaitzrim, Zulif Nimizu. What is the halacha regarding both of them? Hapim is in a sukkah. The inner one isn't considered a sukkah, as she explains, because he uses it throughout the year to eat, to sleep. It's not considered a sukkah. It's more like a home than a sukkah. Of course, it needs a mezuzah. However, the outer one, which isn't really his mocking of dira, it's considered a sukkah. It's kosher for sukkahs. Let's go over to Rash. Six lines from the top. The, uh, the potters would have two sukkahs. That was his uh, place of business. That was his uh, storage room. That's where he had his shop. Actually, the inner one was the storage, and the outer one, that's where he would sit and do his malach. And that's where he would bring out his kaderas, his pots, uh, that's where he would display his wares. That was his, his showroom. That was his place of malach. So the inner one was actually his place of dwelling. Sorry about that. The inner one was a place of dwelling, and the outer one was a place where he did his malach and actually sold his pots. So what's Allah says, Rashi, Pnim is in a sukkah. In Bolesha, Besuchah, Bechag, Lashem, Sukkah. It doesn't work. Ba'afika, Vloi, Be'in a sukkah, Lashem, Chag. Want to learn tomorrow, Be'ez Hashem. You don't have to actually build your sukkah, the Shema. Even if you happen to have a shack, that's fine. However, says Rashi, here it's different. So although you don't need sukkah l'shem chag, the okibay sil kamila, the machshir sukkah yishanu masnisin, so we're going to learn an old sukkah, which was not built for the sake of sukkah, that's okay. Hach ain't a sukkah, here it doesn't work. The l'shem sukkah hodarboi. 
It doesn't appear like he's using it for sukkah. He lives there, eats there, sleeps. That's his makim dira. Talking about the inner one. Therefore, it looks more like a home than a sukkah. However, the outer one is considered a sukkah, not have to go demolish and rebuild it for the sake of sukkahs. You don't need lishma, like basilol. And there's no concern about it appearing like a home. They're given the kula shata lav hachadai, because this is not really where he lives, this is his, uh, his showroom. And now he happens to be living there. It's pretty clear that it's a shame. Mitzvah, it's for sukkah. There's no need for a mezuzah. It's not really a place of dwelling. It's, it's a walkthrough. It's a showroom. To bring merchants, to bring customers. So it's not a makayim dir. Continues the Gemara. So we say the inner one is a makayim dir as opposed to the outer one. And the outer one is potim and amazuz. Vamai, to have a chitzoyna ke vishar pnimis. Fine, the outer one isn't a makam dira, but it's a gateway to the inner one, which is a makam dira. And we know a gateway, at least Midra Bonatesu says, is chayv mezuzah. This is chayv mezuzah. But she was like kavir. Says the more in reality, neither one, the outer one or the inner one, isn't really a set, established place. It seems that, although he does live there somewhat, but mainly he lives at home. So the, even the inner one isn't prominent enough, isn't chosh of enough makimdira to make the outer one its gateway, <laughs> in which case to be chayv mezuzah. So it's enough that the inner one is chayv mezuzah. It doesn't extend over to the outer one. It's not considered a gateway of a semi makimdira, meaning it doesn't give it chashivas like a beishar, and therefore there's no chayv mezuzah. Rabban, I'm going to have an assortment. Of, uh, of sukkahs, all of which are considered kosher for Chag sukkahs. We start with Gan Vach, which is Rosh Tevis for sukkahs Goyim, a shack prepared for, for Goyim to live in. So we're going to have a list of sukkahs which were built and designed for individuals who are not Chayiv in Mitzvah sukkah. Sukkahs Goyim, sukkahs Noshim, sukkahs Behima, sukkahs Kusim, or sukkah Mokal Mokam, any type of other sukkah. Even if it's a step down, a step lower than these mentioned, kshir it's still okay. Uvan as long as it's properly shaded, properly covered with slach. My kilchas, what does kilchas mean? Obviously, there's more shade than sun. There's not to talk about otherwise. So what then does kilchas mean? Is there anything else we're missing? Or of chizda busha asal sell sukkah, provided he put the slach on the shame cell, meaning it was done to provide shade. You don't need l'shem mitzvah, but you need that it should have been built as a as a place of shelter, to create shade as opposed to a storage area, as opposed to just for tzniyas, or certainly if it's meant as a place of dwelling throughout the year, like a bias. It needs to be a cell sukkah. Let's go over to Rashi. So it's the second wide line. Sukkah's goyim. Shasuya lode bo Going lived it throughout the summer. Sukkah mukam mukam. I feel a even if it's a step down than the ones you mentioned. It's still kosher. Now, what are we referring to? Look, I'm farish my soon. The Gemara soon explain exactly what we're referring to. Says the Gemara provided it's mesucha kilchos. My kilchos says Rashi. My oslash meinim. What does that mean? The ilush that hates it less from Hamasa. Are we speaking about the fact that it has to create shade? Of course. Ubudava shakashal sachboy has to be kasha schach, pshita, of course, atu mishum de rea, vimila chernaisa, just because it has other deficiencies. Shalinasa shem sukkah wasn't made for a sukkah, the skasha af of suis. Would you think that it's kasha even if it's not properly shading? Of course you need proper shade. So what's the point of adding? They need kilchas. Amrav Chizah says Rashi, hai kilchas at the ka'amar, hu shem sukhechas yof. It's properly mesukhech, to mucha milsa shasi osa, rishainel sel hoisen. It's properly covered, which indicates that it's trying to provide, provide shelter and shade. Well, it's this ba'am, and not just to, to provide privacy. Says Rashi, even though we just learned earlier. We're following Basil, you don't need to have it l'shem chag. You don't have to the intent, the kavana. L'shem sukkah but it has to be for the sake of sukkah, meaning 
Well, it's sales with the Makraya Sukkah, she's a Chachna Chorif. A Sukkah, by definition, is a shade provider, a shelter provider, a shield. So it has to be done for that sake, as opposed to just for Tzniyas, or some say for storage purposes. That's not considered a Sukkah. Okay, so we have Ganvach, which are Kasher, Goyim, Noshem, Behema, and Kusim. Tesis says, either we hold that Kusim are the Geiri Arroyes, who converted on account of the uh, fact that they were threatened by the lions, the story there in the Nach, and the other sheet that says Geiri Emes, holds that the afterwards they probably converted. But at this point, we're speaking about Kusim, whose uh, Geiris is questionable, and they consider like Goyim in our context. Okay, so we have all those, Akasher, and even more, even Mekol Mokim. says, Gmar Mekol Mokim, I'll see you my. What are we going to include there? Well, Suyi Sukkot Rak Vash. We're coming to include another list of Sukkot, which are really even more deficient than the ones we mentioned, as we want to see in a second. And those Sukkot are very temporary structures. They're here today, gone tomorrow. Even those, says the Brisa Akasha for Sukkot. The Tan Rabbanu, Sukkot Rak Bash, what is that? Sukkot Royim, shepherds created these shacks um, for protection. Sukkot Kayotzim, these are the fellows guarding the, uh, the figs that are drying out in the field. Sukkot Burgonim, these shacks intended for uh, hunters or uh, the, uh, the, 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 the guards of the, of the orchards. Sukkot Shemi Peris, another type of Sukkot for Shemi Peris. Sukkah Mikal Mokim Kshira. So all these, although they're flimsy and temporary, they're fine. And even Mikal Mokim, even others which are even more deficient, a step down. Everything's okay. As long as it's properly Mesuchach. Once again, Michael Chasa, what do we mean? Or Chizda. Ush Asosh Litzel Sukkah, it appears that it was done to generate shade and protection. It's properly covered, as opposed to just for Tzniyas, etc. So in this price, the starting point was. Sukkah's Ragbash. And then we added Mikol Mokim, another list of Sukkahs. Mikol Mokim Asri What is this price that coming to include with Mikol Mokim? Says the Gemara, it's coming to include the Sukkahs mentioned earlier in the first price. Asri Sukkahs Ganvach. Those Sukkahs which were intended for non Yisrael or non Ben Chiyuva use. Ones who are on Chayv and Sukkah. Goyim, Noshim, Behema, and Kus. So it's interesting. In the first price, the starting point was Ganvach. And we added Ragbash as well. In the second price, we begin with Ragbash, and we add Ganvach. Explains the Gemara. It represents a difference in perspective. Haitana de Ganvach, the first price which began with Goyim, Noshim, Behema, and Kusim. That's fine. And even, he said, even ones that are more deficient. The ones for the Royim, for the Kayotzim, even those are fine. Apparently, Ali Malay Ganvach. He considered Ganvach to be superior, Mishum Dekvi, because they're set, more established. They're meant to remain there for a while. So that's the starting point. Those are fine. Because Tana Makamakim, Masui Ragbash. The Tana added the words Makamakim to add even the Ragbash, which are just temporary structures, here today, gone tomorrow. The Loy Kvi, they're not really set and established. So even those, which perhaps are more deficient, are also kosher. And the Farsham ask, if Sukkot is there is Arai, then the less kavod the better. Why is the fact that it's not kavod in place considered deficient? The answer is, Shlomo Kluge says this, when we say there is Arai, it's because Sukkot is a seven day dira. So if the Arai is because it's only going to be used for seven days, that's fine. But here, the fact that it's not kavod is not Sukkot related. It's just circumstantial. It's not something which is inherently kavua. By its very nature, it just travels along with the royim. So that's a deficiency. But it's still included. In Mikol Malkim, it's still kasha. That's Bryson number one. He worked with the concept of kavua. That was his uh, criterion. So Ganvach or kavua. And even Ragbash, which is less kavua. However, Bryson number two was going the other direction. Vai Tana de Ragbash, a second Tana, Alim Le Ragbash. He liked Ragbash better. The Bnei Chayyuvin in him, because the Royim, Kayotzim, all those are Yisraelim. So the Sukkah was built for dwellers who are Chayv and Sukkah. So it gives that structure more prominence. It's more, uh, 
designated, more uh, suitable, so to speak, for sukkahs. And therefore, he considered that to be superior. He said, those are kasher. But still, even the other ones are kasher as well. The Tana Mokal Mokam. He added the words Mokal Mokam last year to add the other list of Ganvach. The ones which were built for Goyim, Nashem, Behema, and Kusim. The law of Bnei Chayu So although the people that are living in the Sukkah are not ones who are Chayv, Mr. Sukkah, it's still okay. So although it's a drop less kasher, it's a drop down, it's a it's a more deficient, it's still kasher because for sukkahs you don't need a kavana and you don't necessarily need kviyas as long as it's a sukkah which has proper tzel. So conclusion, we have a list of ganvach, sukkahs which are relatively kavua but intended for dwellers who are not really obligated to mitzvah sukkah, goyim no shemeh mankusim. We have rakbash, which are less uh, established structures, not so kavua, but they have a mila because they're intended for bnei chiyuva, royim, kayotzim, burgon, and shemeh peris. In Bryce number one, we prefer the ganvach because of its kviyas element. And we add rakbash as well, although it's not so kavua. Bryce number two, preferred rakbash because it's intended for bnei chiyuva, but concluded that even ganvach is good despite the fact that's not intended for people who are chayiv in sukkah. Okay, time for a brief chazara. Rabbi Chan tells us that a round sukkah is fine, provided it can accommodate a square of 4x4. How large a circumference is necessary? He gives us a number of 24, 24 people. How does this work? 24 is way larger than needed, because a square of 4x4, which has a diagonal of 5.6, can be squeezed into a circle with a circumference of 16.8. Teretz 1 in the Gemara was, these 24 people, which represent 24 Amma, in circumference, which has an 8 Amma diameter, those people are outside the Sukkah. It's within the people, it's the airspace within that's considered the Sukkah. So you deduct the Amma width on this side, the person on this side, and the Amma on the other side, leaving you a diameter of nearly 6. It's a circumference of 18, which is a bit more than the required amount of Chumr Leitok. We had a second shot based on the Rabban and the Kisri. We discussed the Shtei Sukkot of the Yitzim, of this, uh, this potter. The inner one is used for Dira, the outer one to display its wares. The inner one is puzzle for a Sukkot, it's like a bias, but it's Chayv Mezuzah. The outer one is considered a Sukkot, but it's potter Mina Mezuzah. We had a list of sukkahs, which were either intended for people who aren't chayiv in sukkah, or sukkahs which are not really kavua. In both cases, the Gemara says it's kosher, and Chazal tells us, we should also sell, sell sukkah, it appears, it was properly covered to create shade and protection, rather than just tzniyas, storage, or a bias. Kotav to you, and Hatzlacha Rabba.